Hey guys, it's Yorkie here with a video to say thank you very, very much for getting the channel to 1 million views. It's quite a substantial number. It's kind of mind-blowing, to be honest. I didn't really expect this to come around quite so quickly. The growth of the channel in the last half a year has been mind-blowing, really. It's completely overwhelmed me. I wasn't expecting the channel to grow so quickly and it's great to see that so many people enjoy watching the content that goes up on the channel whether you're watching the same videos over and over again or whether you're watching every single video or whether you're just someone who isn't actually a subscriber but has just come to the channel and watched a couple of videos enjoyed them and then gone off and watched other videos whatever it's yeah it's really really cool that the channel has reached 1 million views it's yeah, I just want to say a really, really big thank you for that. So, as part of the thank you, I thought I'd do something special. It's something that a number of you guys have asked me about in the comments in previous videos. And it's something that a lot of people seem to be struggling with. And that is basically learning new tracks. And today I'm going to show you how to learn a new circuit. Generally, what I try and do is, when I go to learn a new circuit, is running a warm-up session. I start off with 90 minutes. Uh, there's no point in doing free practice sessions and there's no point in learning the track in time trial because the conditions that you'll be learning in both those two sessions are completely different to what you'll be racing in. Obviously time trial, you're running with optimal settings, you're running with minimum fuel loads, very good tyre temperatures, weather, track conditions, all that sort of stuff. So you'll be getting the fastest lap times you possibly can but you won't have the actual sort of grip levels that you'll get in a in a real race. Same with a free practice, the track is completely green, therefore the track isn't properly gripped up. Whereas a warm-up session, it's just before the race, it's a lot lot closer to actually racing, so you get a better understanding of the car and also the circuit. So I tend to run with a 90 minutes uh, session. The other stuff, the rolling start and the number of laps, uh, those are just generally set up as basic practice for a race tonight that I'm doing with the TGC around the circuit that we are going to be learning. Usually with the conditions, I usually tend to run with either light or medium cloud and start around 11 o'clock noon sort of time of real weather progression and time. Basically just try and get some decent temperature from the circuit and give yourself a rough ballpark figure as to what the track will actually be like. The track that we're going to be showing off and learning today is the Zuhai International Circuit. It's a track that I haven't driven too much. I've been driven at, driving it a fair bit today uh, in practice for tonight. But So I know the track fairly well-ish, but not as well as others. And it is also actually quite a technical and challenging circuit to learn as well. And again, the car is a radical, which will be running uh, in the race tonight. But generally what you should be doing when you go to learn a new circuit is run in a car that you know very well and are very comfortable with. So we'll get straight into the session then and we'll start off and I'll give you guys some pointers and tips on what you should be doing, what you should be looking out for to learn on, well learn when you do your first few laps around a track. So the first thing that I generally, generally tend to do switch to an external chase cam here and basically just drive the circuit very very nice and slowly obviously cold tyres that's not going to help at all but basically the first lap or so I basically just want to map out in my mind what corners are where what follows them so we, obviously we've got a fairly tightish right handle to start off with it kind of opens up as we continue through the corner turn two seems to be a fairly high speed right hander and then we're going to come down into breaking zone of a fairly tight left hander and it does kink to the right upon the exit so that does mean we could get the car a little bit straighter get on the power a little bit earlier than we would normally fast right hander follows and then it looks like we've got a hairpin here this right hander so it'll be fairly slow as you can see, I'm obviously doing this without a track map and without a racing line uh, assist on. Basically, I find it helps to learn a track without those, otherwise you end up learning a track twice. If you've got the racing line assist, you generally tend to pay more attention to that rather than what's 
around the track and what you can use as braking markers and that sort of stuff. So, a fairly tightish left hander, followed by a second left hander that seems to be fairly medium speed, we may need to lift going into that to get through the corner. Then we've got another short straight. And coming along into this, it looks like a fairly tightish right hander, another hairpin, which does open up on the exit as well. So we are actually coming towards the end of the lap, but this is what I generally do for the first couple of laps, is basically just drive around like this, and then we've got a fairly medium speed final corner onto the start finish straight. So yeah, like I was saying, just drive around like this, get an idea of what corners are where on the circuit, try and build up that picture in your mind. And then once you're comfortable doing that, switch to the position that you usually drive in, and you're going to do another lap fairly slowly, and just get an idea of what that is like on board in the driving view that you're used to. Obviously, with track I tend to drive in the helmet cam. I have all the helmet stuff turned off, all those effects. I'm basically just going to use this to get an idea as to the undulations of the circuit. Let's try and start to pick out references to things around the circuit that I can use as basically uh, breaking points. Get an idea of the curbs, the bumps, and just give yourself a better view because obviously all of that is nullified in the actual chase cam. You don't get a real sense of how bumpy the track actually is. So still just taking it fairly easy, nice and slowly and just trying to build up that bigger picture. And then once you've got that, that's when you really need to start looking towards the outside of the circuit and looking for things like 100 brake marker borders. They're generally a very good reference to use most of the corners on most of the circuits unless you're coming from a very high speed into a very, very slow heavy breaking point it'll be around the 100 meter board if not a little bit sooner there are other things you can use marshal posts uh, changes in barriers changes in grass color obviously you can see the darker patches like I'm driving on here of the racing line when the breaking points start to basically show up and you can use those as a visual aid other things that you can do is drive with AI and basically see where they break. Usually they tend to break quite late into some of the heavy braking zones so you may need to break a little bit before them so bear that in mind. Obviously watching other people driving in the game, driving around the circuit on YouTube will help an awful lot and of course actual real life videos of real life professional drivers driving in various cars and various races, driving around the circuit and seeing roughly where they're braking, what sort of braking points they use if you can see outside the car and those sort of things. Obviously TV coverage of better known motorsports like F1 and Blank Pan GT Series and WC just to mention a few where tracks are fairly popular you can use those as well and see what kind of points they use and their apexes, their lines, all that sort of stuff. Okay so now you've got a better picture of what the circuit is like. We're going to start looking for basically our braking points and apexes, paying attention to the curbs, paying a bit more attention to the, the undulations in the circuit. So I'm going to come down and start finish straight here. Uh, pay attention to the first turn. So we've got 200 brake marker board there, and it looks like the track darkens just before that 100 brake marker board. So roughly around there is going to be our braking point. Coming into the corner itself, fairly flat curve. There's a bump in the middle there. Coming out for the exit, there's another bump there, which 
works to both our advantage and also disadvantage. Obviously as you compress in through the bump you get more grip, but as you come out over the crest of that small bump it uh, can potentially unsettle the car, so you need to watch that, especially in traction zones like that. That corner I believe will be completely flat out, so no need to worry about that. And in the talking that, there was a brake marker board there, so there's a 100 meter brake marker board. You can probably use that as a braking point coming down into this right hander here. If you want to brake it a little bit later, this little white curbing concrete on the right hand side of the track there, you could probably use to start that. Coming into the actual apex of the corner, again the curb looks fairly flat, you got a bit on the inside there. Uh, a little rise, you could potentially use that. That's a serrated curb there, so we need to watch that with the traction. But yeah, the curbs look fairly flat on this track, so you can really use those to advantage and attack those. You just need to watch for the inner bit, as it probably won't settle the car a little bit more. That corner on completely flat, you've got a 200 brake marker board there, and again another 100 brake marker board there on the right, right hand side, so we could probably use that as our braking point. It's fairly slow, fairly tight. Again, a dip in the middle and a little bit of camber on that corner so we can probably use that to our advantage, push through the corner a little bit harder but again, being careful that it doesn't unsettle the car too much. So coming down into this next corner start a white concrete there, there's a 100 brake 100 meter brake 100 meter brake marker board. We've also got a couple of cars and trucks here on the right hand side if you want to brake really late you could potentially use those but I think the 100 meter board would be good and again fairly flat curb with a larger bit on the inside so you generally want to avoid that this curb there is fairly serrated fairly bumpy so you need to watch out on the traction zones then so curve fairly flat and again that one's serrated on the exit there so just try out the curbs run over them see which ones are flat try and ignore the actual sounds and pay more attention to uh, visual vibrations in the car and also through the force feedback of your wheel controller. So we've got more brake marker boards there. You could probably use the 100 meter one for this. And coming in, you've got a double curb on the inside there. And a curb on the exit. Which I felt through the wheel was fairly serrated. So the one on the inside was fairly flat. So now that we've got a better idea, although we do have one corner to go, we've got the final one. We can start to build up the speed. 100 brake bar board, 50 there, and again a double, you can take a fair bit on the inside, you can probably run the curb on the outside. So now that we have a rough idea of where we want to start braking, we can start to build out the speed and basically test those, so 100, mi 100, 100 meters, maybe a little bit too late, so maybe a little bit earlier, but now I'm actually going to switch this for you so you can see how much I am braking, how much I am accelerating through corners. This one should be flat, which it is. 100 meters again. And again, running a little bit deep, but actually looking at the brake temperatures there, they are far from optimal. So you do need to be wary of that, your conditions, and that sort of thing. You need to bring your tyres and brakes up to temperature before you can really start pushing. With that corner there, that right hand hairpin, I did use the 100 brake marker, to brake marker board whilst I was talking, I did look over at it. And again, 100 there. Which seems about right for that corner. And run the curb. So we may be able to take that corner a little bit quicker, probably not lift off as much. 100 meter border there. Seems about right for this corner as well get into the apex quite nicely and you just need to be careful on the exit there in the traction zone as it does continue to turn in right if you get on the power too hard especially without ABS 50 meter board okay 50 meter board seems a little bit too late for that corner but like I was saying if you get too hard on the power without traction control it could end up potentially spinning in the car so go for another lap just before the 100 brake marker board on this one that seems about right hook up the apex there need to watch these bumps and that felt fairly good start to build up the speed now this one completely flat that was good just before the 100 mile board there get onto the curve quite nicely and again out through the exit as well coming through here completely flat 100 mile board on the right get the car slowed down 
rear wanted to rotate there into the corner, which did help, but obviously needed to be wary of that as well. Again, 100 brake marker board. Getting the car nice and slow before the corner, turning it in, hooking up the apex quite nicely. So we're going to attack this corner a little bit more. Okay, not quite as much as that. Do need to lift a little bit. Also, I probably could have turned in a little bit earlier. So again, same point as before. Quite comfortably able to get into the apex of the corner. And it is just a case of type, trial and error. Seeing what works for you. I'm going to try between... Yeah, that was good. Roughly between the 100 and the 50 meter board, so roughly about 70, 75 meters. Worked quite well for that corner there, so... Again, just before the 100 marker board, turn the car in, watch the bumps. Once you get past the bumps, that's when you can really start to attack the throttle. Coming through here. Just shy of the apex there. A couple of metres too deep, too late on the brakes. see as you start to learn your braking points you can start to push a little bit harder you can attack the curves more there you go that's pretty much bang on yeah you can attack the curves more you can attack the braking zones a little bit more <laughs> like that actually braked a little bit later than the 100 marker board as you saw ran a little bit too deep didn't quite hook up the apex. So it is just a case, like I've been saying in this video, of trial and error. Use the visual cues of the darker patches on the actual track in front of you as racing lines and your braking zones like that. You can see where it starts to break, you can see where where it's kind of turning. And generally with the skid marks you can see where most of the cars are running through the, through the corners. Try and follow those, they'll give you a good indication as to what the line should be. Try and avoid using the racing line aid, like I was saying in the, earlier in the video, because it's not dynamic. It's not on a per car basis. And if you do go slightly offline, you can potentially get a fast line through the next corner by not using the normal conventional racing line. So in some ways it just hinders your performance. It doesn't change or anything like that. It's not on a car by car basis, so your braking points may be wrong for the car that you're actually in. Generally the braking points on the track are roughly the same place no matter what car you're in, whether you're on a road, a high spec road car or whether you're in like a, a Formula A, Formula B, such as the speed difference between the cars and the stopping power for the cars, they kind of balance out. Obviously Formula A cars and Formula B cars and also the LMP and LMP1 and LMP2 cars have pretty good, or shall I say, very very good brakes, so they can brake from a much higher speed and still stop in pretty much the same sort of distance that a road car can do from a lower speed. So do bear that in mind. There's something else I was going to say. Yeah, generally with road cars as well, the um, where their brakes aren't quite so good, you may need to be braking a little bit earlier. So it is basically just a test for each car. Turn a couple of laps once you've learned the circuit in the car that you're comfortable with. Try another car and then go racing. 
Don't just jump straight in, straight in the deep end. Don't try and run before you can walk. And generally, it's the easiest way to learn the circuit. Basically, just do laps over and over and over again. And hopefully, it will start to ingrain in your head. As to where your breaking points are, that sort of thing. Cars like this one, where it doesn't have ABS or traction control, you got to be careful with your brakes. For instance here, you brake hard and then as you get closer to the corner, lift off the brakes. Stop the wheels from locking once the downforce goes. Because obviously as you decrease in speed, you get less downforce. And if you're still hard on the brakes, when you've got no downforce, the wheels, or shall I say the brakes, will lock the wheels on the car. For instance here, I'm just going to brake in a straight line. And it should have locked the wheels on there, but for some reason, it didn't. But generally, yeah, generally you want to ease off the brakes as you get closer to the corner, especially if you want to start turning in as well. And the other thing you need to watch out for is weather conditions because the car and the track will handle differently in different conditions at night and in adverse weather such as rain and fog like that your braking distances will increase especially as track temp temperature drops and you therefore get less grip your braking distances will increase so you need to bear that in mind brake a little bit earlier than you would if you were running in clear weather like I am here. Generally the hotter the track, the easier it is to keep your tyres up to temperature. Likewise with the brakes and keep them around the optimal sort of setting, or temperature so I say. And I'll provide you with the most grip, the most braking power. And that's basically what you'll get in your time trial sessions. So. Use time trial for hot lapping when you want to go really, really quick, but if you want to learn a circuit, do it here in a warm-up session. You get a better idea as to what it will actually be like when it comes to racing. So, now that you've actually got very good understanding of what it's like to actually drive the normal racing line around a track. Why not try driving a line as if you're overtaking someone? It's very, very good knowledge to have. So, say I'm going down the inside of someone at turn one. Obviously, the corner is going to be a lot tighter. I do a little bit more braking, and. That will give you valuable information as to what it'll be like. Like here, 100 brake meter board. It's very, very tight. I need to get the car slowed right down if I actually want to turn in and make the apex and stay on the track on the exit. So, if you want to get a little bit of a one up on your competitors, try something like that. Also, if you're defending, like practice doing switchbacks with pretend cars. Basically you just see what you can get away with on the circuit with the car. And basically you just try and gain as much knowledge of the actual track before you actually go into a race against AI or other people online or anything like that. And that'll just help give you a much better understanding of what to expect when you come into those kind of situations. Obviously it's going to be different each time and it is going to be different when you actually come to actually overtaking because obviously you're practicing and pretending that someone's there when they're not. But if you do it when you've actually got a car there, at least you've got some knowledge of what to expect and work out for when it comes to it and it'll just make you a better driver. I mean, you get more clean overtakes, you won't run into people quite as much, and 
generally it will improve your racecraft and it will improve the enjoyment of the game and it will also improve it for others as well so I'm hoping this video has helped you guys I once again very very thankful for getting the channel to 1 million views and we're not actually too far off 10,000 subscribers so I'll be doing another video for that it will be on a slightly different topic but again it's something that is very highly requested by an awful lot of people and it will be something that is very very useful but yes hopefully this guy's has helped you out hopefully you would have learned something from it hopefully you'll be able to learn tracks a little bit easier and hopefully it will help you enjoy the game that little bit more but yeah thank you very much for watching guys hopefully I shall see you soon take care